Welcome to another virtual field trip at the Ken Sealing Water Region Museum. Today, we're talking about the three main groups that lived right here in the region over 200 years ago. Those groups included the First Peoples or First Nations, the European settlers that were coming to the area, and the Black settlers. If you've watched our last two videos, you know we've been talking about the Black settlers that came to live in this area 200 years ago in a settlement called the Queen's Bush. So what happened to this settlement? Now you might remember that the area the settlers were living in was called the Queen's Bush because it belonged to the Queen of England, Queen Victoria. So the people living there, both black and white, were squatting. This meant they didn't own the land even though they had cleared it and built houses and began to farm. And there were many people living there, about 2,500 people, 1,500 of whom were black. They hoped that they would be able to buy the land when it finally came up for sale, which eventually it did. Unfortunately, when the land came up for sale, it wasn't as simple as someone just buying the land that they were working. People called surveyors came out to divide the land in the Queen's Bush into lots. Now, a lot is like a piece of land that you can buy. So, for example, if you live in a house, your lot would include your house, your front yard, and your backyard. Whereas if you're in an apartment building, the lot for that building would include the parking lot and any green spaces. Just like our school lots often include sports fields and their parking lots, as well as the school itself. So the issue became that these lots didn't take into consideration where people were already living and farming. So two lots might actually divide a farm right in half. Another problem was the fact that even though slavery was illegal in Canada, not all white people believed that blacks and whites should be treated equally. Since many of the black settlers were actually escaping slavery, it meant that many of them had not had the opportunity to go to school, so they weren't able to read or write. Unfortunately, this meant that the people selling the land could actually make very unfair deals and lie to the black settlers about that buying process. Many of the people in the Queen's Bush had created homes by clearing the land of trees, making it easier to farm, which made the land more valuable. Since the land was now worth so much more, they actually couldn't afford to buy it. These settlers felt it was unfair that they should have to pay higher prices only because of the work they had already done to improve the land. The settlers of the Queen's Bush decided to write a petition to the government for help. Now, a petition is a written request, usually signed by many people, asking an authority, like the government, for help. The people of the Queen's Bush wrote to the government several times. In 1843, almost 100 people petitioned the Governor General of Canada asking for the land to be given to them as a grant. Unfortunately, these petitions were not successful. Because of their inability to pay for the land they had worked so hard for, many of the black settlers living in the Queen's Bush were forced to move away, leaving their homes behind. Some went to Owen Sound, Chatham, or other places in Ontario, and many went back to the United States. Some farmers were able to purchase their land in the Queen's Bush. Successful black farmers like John and Eliza Little were able to purchase their land and they remained in the area, continuing to contribute to the community for years to come. Today, I invite you to think about what it might have been like to be a neighbor to someone living in the Queen's Bush 200 years ago. If you lived next to someone and you knew them and saw them working so hard to build a home, but they were struggling, how would you feel? Now, the petitions to the government did not receive a response, but there is a chance that if more people had insisted that the people of the Queen's Bush be treated fairly, the government would have had to respond. So today I invite you to think about what you might have said in your own petition. How would you have phrased it? Give writing your own a try. Now the Queen's Bush is something that happened in the past. It's important that we know about it and that we remember it. But it's also important to remember 
that you can speak out against unfair things that you see happening right now. When you see something that you think is unfair, you can speak up, write a letter, start a petition. Try asking an adult in your life how you can make a difference about something that you care about.